one for the better team. I can't say it any other way. I don't really think everybody knows what they're about to witness. I have no talent when I see one. I should be an NFL scout. Jonathan, I don't like that pick. I love that pick. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dorn Bay Podcast, and welcome to our divisional series. This is where we go through each division in the NFL and rank who's going to come in first and who is going to come in dead last. This episode, we have the AFC West. Now, if you don't remember who's in it or you just didn't know, the Kansas City Chiefs are in this division. The Las Vegas Raiders, the Oakland Raiders came to my mind. Uh, Denver Broncos and Los Angeles Chargers. Now, two teams got new coaches. The Raiders got Antonio Pierce, which he was the interim head coach last year. Now he's the full-time head coach. And obviously the Chargers got uh, the Michigan great, an all-time great college football coach, (laughs) Jim Harbaugh. Uh, And last year, he's got a lot of work to do. The Chargers came in dead last. The Broncos came in second to last. Raiders came in second. And the Chiefs came in first. Only the Chiefs made the playoffs last year. Who I have coming in first in the AFC West. Should we all say say it together? (laughs) (laughs) Let's say it together. Yeah. Three, two... One cheese. I wish I could say something different, but oh well. <laughs> it's too obvious. Uh, and who I have coming in dead last is going to be the Denver Broncos. And in last place in the AFC West, I have the Denver Broncos. Last place in the AFC West, AFC West I have the Broncos as well. Last place in the AFC West, I have the Las Vegas Raiders. Oh, okay. all right, uh, we have a difference. Okay. Yeah, they're they're not far off. For yeah, me, me to too. Be honest. Yeah, they're not far <laughs> off. Um, no, no Super Bowl hangover. Uh, on the third try of the Super Bowl, no, no Super no. Bowl hangover for the Chiefs. No, I mean and, they got yeah. they got Hollywood Brown, they got Xavier Worthy. I mean Rasheed Rice is back, Kelsey is back. Pistachio looking like he's gonna have a big year. So the only the only yeah. thing that concerns me is the loss of Legarius Sneed. Um, if you guys remember, he was a really really good cornerback last year. He was in fantasy football. It was to the point where I would go on my live show on Sunday, and it would get to the point where he was shutting down cornerback or wide receivers enough wide receivers. for it to actually matter in fantasy football. He <laughs> held AJ Brown I think to like one catch for six yards one game. He held a right. lot of people to not a lot of fantasy points, and it was getting to the point where it's like, okay, top receiver against Sneed, like just don't put him in mm. or, or what a temper expectations. Though. Yeah, so him leaving um, is not great, but I, I mean, it's the Chiefs, it's Mahomes. So I know we were talking before the podcast, but uh, looking it up, that there's no NFL team has ever even made it back to the Super Bowl after winning two in a row. Now, if you're like me, I was like, what about the Bills where well, they lost? You know, they, there's been teams that have been there repeatedly. No one has three-peated ever. No one's let alone gotten to the chance, gotten a chance to get to a three-peat, not even getting to the door. So the Chiefs, I, we're all bullish on the Chiefs. Like, John, you said all the reasons you said. For me, the biggest thing is they keep the big four, big you know, big core of Mahomes, Kelsey, uh, Jones, and Andy Reid, of course. So it's like – And Taylor Swift. And Taylor oh, Swift. okay. Yeah. Got to keep yeah, that relationship so, going. I actually, they, there yeah. might be some rocky, rocky no, don't, uh, waters. Don't, I heard don't. that they're they're they may be breaking up. So oh, single oh. Kelsey uh, after a breakup, dude. That's a that's a number one fantasy yeah. pick. Uh, <laughs> no, I think that's Ooh. slump. Really, you think he's gonna be sad? Uh, I think yeah. he's gonna be angry. <laughs> we, okay, we're not. We're just <laughs> now we're. Podcast. What are we not predicting? Reality. Yeah, what are we predicting? <laughs> Over under on their relationship. No, that's these are human beings, guys. Please, but none of it's, us are that bullish on the Chargers, sadly. Because Jared, you, I mean, not. I, I, hate, I hate that I keep calling you out. And they will make the wild card. They will. Oh, make oh the wild okay. Card. So how many? None wins? of us have them overruling the Chiefs. Ten. I feel like okay. Ten, ten. wins for the Chargers. I think ten the wins Chargers, for the Chargers. The Chargers are going to realize they had how, five last. They're going to realize yeah. how 
valuable Keenan Allen was. Because um, yeah. he was a go-to guy. He, like, anytime he was in trouble, throw him the ball, Keenan. third down, third and three, throw Keenan Allen the ball. What are you going to do now? I, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say... Yeah, that's, no, it's they all fair five points. And, they I'm, went 5-12 and 12 last year, and the coaching situation, it took them so long to fix what we, on our podcast, have known for years. And it's like, I do think the Michigan coach that got there, he's been, you know, Super Bowl energy. He's got... He has the ability to... Get he more does. than five wins. He definitely does, but like Jonathan said, there's so many new pieces. I mean, Eckler's gone. Mike Williams oh, yeah. gone. Keenan Allen gone. I mean, I mean, new got, coach, whole new coaching, staff. new coaching staff. Yeah. Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins is your backfield. It's like you got so much new stuff. Maybe it's good because they needed some I, sort of. Change. I know they needed they to need, burn that place down that, and rebuild. They it. really did. That's, so that's where I'm coming from. That the, the they had to clear out the house and. As long, as long as they have a quarterback, because so many coaches, we say this all the time, they go to these great coaches, go to these teams, but if there's not a quarterback, all the other pieces kind of, not to say they don't matter, but because all the players you mentioned are huge to the Chargers we know, but if they keep Herbert and he's legit the way that people think he can be, that then it's all things, I might call them the dark horse of the season, the Chargers, considering they went 5-12, and 12. who knows? I, yeah. I, I still have the Chiefs winning for the division. but I'm actually really excited for their defense. I mean, Harbaugh had a great defense. Yeah. I know he doesn't have the same coordinator, but he had a great defense at Michigan, was always known for, you know, stopping teams. And I think that, you know, Jared, you always talk about this, that, oh, my gosh, the Chargers have so many stars on defense, oh, and yeah. they can never work together. They never, literally, they never actually stopped anybody, never looked like they were a force. I think that's going to change this year. He's going to focus early in the season on playing good defense, running the ball, fundamentals. I think they can get to that 7 eight maybe win range i'd be pretty surprised if they went nine and eight like had a winning record i don't think they'll make the playoffs but i do have them coming in yeah. second in the division so it's a step up i just think herbert's that good what was the stat talking about the defense though wasn't this their stat last year that they spent like the most money on defense with the least out of it you know yeah, like, like least the lowest or something yeah like they allowed yeah. the most yards for having spent the most money or something like that don't quote yeah, me but, but and yeah. last year herbert was he had his rib injury, and then he ended up just not playing like the oh, last yeah. five or six games. That's so yeah, we we were five and twelve, but really we weren't even trying for the last five or six games. <laughs> That's true. But That's true. it's it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of work from Harbaugh. He usually turns things around pretty quickly, but yeah. when it comes to actually like making progress in playoffs, um, that's when it's gonna take a little bit longer. But, I mean, I love that he got Greg Roman as an offensive coordinator. I've been – I actually – I should pull the clip up. I had said this when we were looking for an offensive coordinator last year, and we got Kellen Moore. And Kellen Moore, now you guys have him, uh, Caleb, on the Eagles. Mm -hmm. But I suggested Greg Roman because oh, yeah. the Chargers can't run the ball. And Greg Roman was formerly with the Ravens, uh, I think I think two years ago, um, that's all he knows how to do is run the ball. <laughs> and Jim Harbaugh, all he knows how to do is run the ball. Uh, yeah. So in, in nine times out of ten, if you win the ground game uh, in the game, you're going to win the game nine times out of ten. Uh, and if you have a lead, you keep the lead by running the ball, not passing it and stopping the clock. So I love that pickup. He brought over Jesse Minner from Michigan as a defensive coordinator. Um Obviously, he's great. He had the lowest points per game uh, in, of anybody in college football. Uh, so everything is, is the right people now. Yes, the players could be better, and they will be better eventually. But for the quick turnaround that Harbaugh's had, I think this is good to kind of have an open playing field to see who shines. Josh Palmer, uh, Ladd, the guy from Georgia, uh, Quentin Johnson, this is your time to shine. <laughs> like it's an open playing field. See who shows up. Cause if you had Keenan and you had Mike Williams, it's no, there's no point in them being the stars that they are on a team like the chargers. They're just going to be yeah. wasting their last couple years of their career. So it makes sense to just have an open audition on offense. See who shows up. We have Gus Edwards, JK Dobbins, and then we have a couple rookies on uh, at running back. Just an open audition for these guys and play fun, play, play free, and see what happens. <laughs> and and the great thing is you play the Raiders twice, they suck, and you play the Broncos twice, exactly. and they suck. That's three wins at least. <laughs> yeah. Ex Excuse me? 
I said at least. <laughs> <laughs> Three wins at cat. least. That's four wins easily. <laughs> oh, God. Easily. You better, better not camera. eat those words. <laughs> easily. Easily. So, whatever. I talked about him too much. So, anything well, else on the AFC West? Well, the Chargers do have the – I think they're tied for, like, one of the easy maybe top three easiest schedule for at least projected for you know before the season starts so is that right yeah, yeah i'm looking at for according to cbs sports strength of schedule yeah what are we fourth you said they're tied for 27th but there's like a bunch of other ties yeah, so, it's so like, that's fifth about fifth. yeah but there's like 229s 231s so tied know, for yeah, okay. seventh or eighth not bad all right so it's possible it's possible <laughs> but again um, it's like who knows based off last year's win so yeah yeah theoretically 